Okay guys, welcome back to Teen Muscle Radio and episode number 21. Uh, so today we are joined uh, by Luke Johnson uh, from Shredded by Science and I'm sure you guys will all know Luke. So what we are going to do is we're going to get straight into uh, the topic and straight into the good stuff. So today we're going to talk about uh, basically getting into online coaching and the reason for this is basically... Um, Obviously, I've been involved in online coaching for a short period of time, uh, comparative to Luke. I've been in the industry for sort of two years, um, and I've sort of been getting questions, etc., from people, and I wanted to provide a resource uh, for you guys. So we're going to basically take it from square one. Um, so we're going to surround sort of the setup process, etc., et uh, and then moving into sort of the, the later stages of being an online coach and, and how you can really take it to that next level. So, um, Luke, first sort of topic I wanted to discuss is when uh, when it comes to sort of uh, becoming um, an online coach. So the the first stage of of really getting into online coaching, now you see a lot of people on Instagram that are maybe Instagram famous. You get the whole uh, gym memes with the uh, done one show become online coach. <laughs> Um, and I think this gives the online coaching industry maybe a little bit of a bad vibe and it almost scared me off a little bit when I started coaching some people um, in 20, 2014, 2015. Um, so the first question that I really would like to ask is, is how do you feel that it is the best transition into becoming an online coach? And alongside that, do you think that there's a good advantage or uh, that people should maybe look into doing uh, one-to-one personal training prior um, to, to to getting into the online coaching industry? Cool. Well, first of all, you've ruined my, you need to have abs and you need to have an Instagram account with right. 20,000 followers yep. and then sell these guides for £9.99, which are originally £99.99. <laughs> so cheers, AJ. Also, I just want to say thanks for having me on the show um, to be on a, to be a 30-year-old um, on a show which has teen in it. <laughs> Uh, and it's episode 21 so we're just at the teen eras with the ages so that's good um so because there's a few bits in this i may ask like clarification but i'll start off with the the offline to online now there is overlap as in program is pro is programming um uh, coaching someone is coaching someone however there are a lot of differences in regards to an online coach you have to be ready to only work on the beach um the Wi-Fi, you just have to live with poverty Wi-Fi, so you need to accept that. But, but in all seriousness, um, do I think you need? I think not only um, as personal training experience, but as in life experience as well. Yeah. So quite a lot of these guys are getting into it, and um, they they haven't got this offline personal training experience in regards to not just being able to coach people. Or training and nutrition. I mean, the training and nutrition knowledge they can pick up from um, sitting on their bum at home. It's no longer like you have to go and do a university degree. You then have to go and do your crappy PT level three qualification, which is nationally recognized and which most evidence-based practitioners recognize it as being crap. Mm -hmm. um, so you can go and watch Eric Helms' Muscle and Strength Pyramids. He, you can listen to AJ's podcast. You can follow Shredded by Science. You can. There's so many resources out there. So in regards mm. to getting the knowledge for training and nutrition, I don't think you need to start off with um, in-person, offline person training. Okay. However, I know me when I first qualified as like a 21-year-old, and I, I originally thought, yeah, I've got this piece of paper. I'm just going to go into the gym. Everyone's forty pound an hour was the the thing at the time. It probably still is around forty pound an hour. You just think, yeah, I've got this certificate. I'm going to go in there. But me as a thirty year old com compared to me as a twenty one year old, my confidence levels are a lot better in regards to just being able to talk to people, um, and the actual being able to adapt. Um, and working with a certain type of person definitely comes in handy in gaining that experience. Mm -hmm. however, however, when it's an online person training, you can be very, very specific with your niche. Mm -hmm. So we're, I always give the example like offline, you can go and talk to Gladys, who's 82, and then you can go and talk to AJ, who's – how old are you, AJ? 20. 20? Yeah. Damn. That, tip, that decade. So I, I can go and talk to AJ and we could be talking about lifting. We could be talking about girls. We could be talking about doing stuff with girls or boys, whatever. You know what I mean? I'm not discriminating. But then I'm not going to go and talk to Gladys on the gym floor and be like, Gladys, how you doing? 
as as Arthur have you been sorting him out in the bedroom department like I'm not going to talk like that way mm. so we're, we're, when people try to do that online it just doesn't work very well yeah. so it's a really good question I don't think I think it's valuable as in to get offline experience to work out who you work best with yeah. and just get life skills in general mm -hmm. but when you're looking at online coaching I know plenty of offline coaches which are terrible at online because they're like I don't know how to even use the internet yeah. I don't know what is Dropbox. What the hell is that? What's an, an iCloud? What's G Drive? And what's this? So I think as a as we're moving as the as we're moving more with the times with social media with with things like not using a USB. Mm -hmm. Remember the USB days? Yeah. That was when I first started. I'm thinking about it, it's probably five, maybe a little bit long longer when I started doing online coaching. But it's that USB, and I remember losing it once, and it was in my Vauxhall Corsa, and it fell down the handbrake thing because it wasn't the best car. Um, at the time and it had a little gap and I, I can remember going to the house I'm like dad I can't find my USB I've got all my training client stuff on that USB oh, <laughs> and we ended up going out there with like looking around in the car a hanger in the handbrake we found it and I was like Phew. so I think there is definitely similarities like training and tra training and nutrition is, is that it's all about and what thing I want to highlight as well everyone's really annoying me at the moment where just learning for the sake of it so I'm just going to do another academy because this one's on nutrition. I've already, I've only done three other academies already. Um, I'm going to go to another conference that I've already seen that person. They're just going to talk about the same. Sh can I swear on this? Yeah, you can swear. Yeah, go for it. Thank fuck for that. <laughs> the same shit over and over again. And I think what 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 really annoys me is that everyone's in this thing of l like learning, learning, learning all the time. With online coaching, you don't need to have offline experience but i think it can help mm -hmm. but you need to um when it comes to online you need to be very specific yeah. like you yours is what the team muscle radio yeah team muscle radio yeah um, oh, it's, it says what it is on the tin yeah, yeah, yeah. You know I mean? you're putting that consistent valuable content to that demographic because if you try to just please everyone online yeah i've tried it, i've tried it, that <laughs> yeah We've all tried it. Yeah, I remember yeah. back in the day, my spreadsheets had grid lines in them. <laughs> and there's a picture, a little picture of me topless. I, and I actually I had them. Well. I'm like, yeah, like, but then I had, to, I had like Debbie, who I had like Josh, uh, Josh yeah, and Debbie, they was like son and uh, and, and mum. Uh, and they both had the same looking spreadsheets. And I think, I didn't know who wanted to, to me topless on their spreadsheet less, like <laughs> Debbie or Josh. So, I don't think you can. I just think as in a person, just getting life experience, um, it can help. What was like the first part of your question? Um, it was it was primarily just sort of the first part of the question was sort of just coming into it. And I think you, you touched on that really well in terms of how people could initially tran like transition into online coaching. The f you touched on the fact that you obviously the whole 20k followers etc etc and you touched on obviously the, the, the personality and dealing with people and uh, learning that through one-to-one -one coaching and then it's sort of yeah essentially the question was primarily based on whether people should be looking to do one-to-one -one prior to to being an online coach and, and you answered that 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 pretty well can i also add that i'm a advocate as in i don't think we should divide them up as online and offline personal training okay I think we do that because we like to categorize everything. Yeah. But if I went back into the gym, mm -hmm. all of my all of my clients would have to check in online. Oh yeah. Once yeah, a yeah. week, yep, yep, yep. all of my clients would have their programming done. It's like I look at the like the nineteen nineties personal trainer. Where it's just like a factory worker. Mm -hmm. Where someone comes in, you go, "Are you fit?" You put a heart rate monitor on them, and then you put them on the treadmill. And you look on your phone and you're just like, yeah, whatever. And then you beast them for that hour. And then they go away. They eat what they want. There's no other training support. It's like, if you pay me for more, to train you three times a week, I will train you three times. But if you only pay me once, I'm only going to beast you for that session. You go away. You do what the hell you want. So it's a, I, I look at it as personal training is sort of like a, it, it's not enough now to just give like training and then you have a, a, a nutritionist and then you have yeah. someone who does your sports massage because your your trainer or physio has beasted you for that hour or two hours a week and they don't know what the hell they're doing mm -hmm. so i don't think we should categorize them as different the only thing which is different in my opinion is whether you see that person via skype once a month or yeah. if at all or if you're actually training them in person and off online personal training isn't for everyone 
the best mm. avatar for online personal training is someone who is younger, who knows how to use technology, who knows how to track macros, who knows how to train, who enjoys training, not um, 48 year old Sally who's been on every single yo yo diet in diet out there. She doesn't even know what a carbohydrate is. She's never lifted the weight. If you say hip thrust, she thinks it's something you do in the bedroom. Um, they don't do well with online person training. Take this one, like learn from my mistakes. Five years ago, I, I had. I had a young dude like you, younger than you at the time. Uh -huh. And guess what? Through just coaching a wide variety of people, they were killing it. I didn't have to. They, they checked in every week. They tracked everything. They enjoyed their training. They got amazing results. And then I had other clients um, who didn't have that motivation, who didn't have that knowledge, who didn't have that experience of lifting. And they done crap with online personal training. Not crap because I, I still looked after them, but it took me – three to four times the amount of time per week to service that client than it did to service someone like AJ, where I could yeah. literally just say, here's your new mesocycle. Uh, your weight on average is dropping. That's cool. We're on target. If it's not, we're going to tweak it or we're going to have a diet break. I'm just going to look at your MyFitnessPal and I've realized that you just keep spunking all of your fat intake on peanut butter. Stop mm -hmm. eating peanut butter. Let's get a bit more variety in regards to having some red meat, some fattier cuts of meat. Mm -hmm. Uh, and coaching someone that way because they've already got that knowledge rather than just trying to like on, online personal training will not work very well if they are low motivation have low knowledge and low experience in lifting mm, so just, yeah. like the only way that could work is if you do this group thing yeah so yeah, group yeah. Online training might work but it's not a it's not it's sort of semi-personalized in regards to everyone you might have a group where you're looking at an education process mm -hmm. so it might be each week you or each day there's little videos little tips or it might be like a 30 day or 60 day tone or shape or whatever epoxy words you want to use yeah. um and then that works in that capacity where you're not expecting them to track all the macros and it's more of like a, a learning or unlearning bad habits forming some good habits uh, and doing it that way but when it comes to if it's just like one-to-one -one online personal training it, it doesn't work and you just got to marry the approach to what works for that type of individual that avatar yeah absolutely and to to come back to your comment as well regarding sort of uh, the one-to-one -one trainers and the the online side of things as well i totally totally agree that that they they should be together you should have check-ins you should treat one-to-one -one clients like you would an online in terms of the infrastructure with training sheets with um you know the, all, all the data logged etc and and that's something that i found uh, in the gym that sort of i i do some one-to-one -one training is the other trainers they they want they, they they're interested in online but they're currently they've not got any infrastructure for their one-to-one -one clients they're not getting results with the one-to-one -one clients but they're full so they're earning lots of money but they're not churning out any results with these you know 30 40 clients that they've got because they've got no structure to check in with them they don't know what they're eating they're referring out for nutrition it's like they're making lots of money but they're not actually getting any results um mm -hmm. so so i really yeah i really really do agree with that point um and yeah yeah great answer to that question so we will we <laughs> we will move on to basically so let's say that individual a is has become an online coach um and one of the biggest questions um that, that a lot of people have asked me and a lot of people asked in sort of my free group as well is is, is how do you go gaining clients when when you're mm -hmm. an online coach and maybe the first way that i wanted to structure this question to you luke is how do you go about gaining clients when you're literally square one you have no real name for yourself you're not instagram famous you're not on a beach you haven't got 20k followers how do you go about gaining those initial clients that will then obviously maybe provide momentum uh, to to get you further um, mm -hmm. so yeah how do you gain those clients are we talking about they've got their systems in place because i think one of the things what annoys when i first started it might might sometimes it would take me like six to eight hours for a startup plan i'd be there with a calculator and i'd be like okay two grams per kilogram and their body weight da, 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 da. now we've got spreadsheets for for doing that so are we go in as in they have their systems in place because systems is a key thing when it comes to yeah. efficiency and taking on more clients and spending less time per client per week per month yeah i think i think that's a good i think that's a good idea maybe we should in terms of 
setting up the structure maybe we should talk about that first prior to going on to i think you i think they both work hand in hand hand in hand okay we'll hand, we'll hand um, in hand it we're hand, hand it. we're virtually handhold and, we'll hand and then we'll see how far we go we might go base two we're in, in this skype and then we might have to meet up to go <laughs> to the third base um okay but, cool. so do you want me to so, restructure the question or no no okay? no we're, we're, okay. we're keep with it as okay, long cool. as we can touch base on sister on I'd, i mean aj said about do you want a question beforehand i said forget the questions we'll just go with it i'd rather <laughs> not see the questions i think it shows someone's ability or knowledge that they're like oh, i don't need to see the questions we're yeah, just no, roll with it. like if it was about training and nutrition then do you want to talk about some sciencey shit i'd be like okay let me stuff. dust off my cobwebs and let me get some references for you to sound so intellectual <laughs> um but I've, going back to it's just to get my very first clients mm. get people who really know you if you're doing online if you're doing offline person training already and you've lost clients because they couldn't afford it or they moved away contact them um put a post up on your personal facebook and say i'm looking for x amount of people to guinea pig pilot whatever the hell you want to call it yeah that's what i did i literally had luke johnson with a lemon ice cream oh, fuck i'm third person what a cock <laughs> um i'll just save it lemon ice cream slightly out of shape body hair and then i just fantasy of i want to be a fitness model i want to be on the front page of a magazine this is my this is my younger douche version of Luke Boys. Um and then so then what I did is I went like complete this was when I was a complete bro. Mm. Where it was like, carbs are bad, I can have them once a day, only in the evening. Uh everything else is just like veg and meat <laughs> or boiled eggs with paprika. Um and walnuts. They had to have walnuts. If the uh, walnuts were, but walnuts are quite expensive. So, um, all you <laughs> teens on here, you teen fans, uh, look for a cheap alternative. Uh, <laughs> you, you don't need it. Oats are fine. You can do that. And some protein <laughs> powder is fine. Proats, I think, <laughs> call it. <that. laughs> so, what I did was um, get shredded. It was a 10 week gap. And I put, and I went in for this magazine thing. It was an online magazine mm -hmm. back in those days. And we're talking like five years ago or, or longer. Um, shaved or waxed all of my chest hair uh pumped done probably like 400 push-ups put baby oil on got my sister's boyfriend at the time who's now a husband to take pictures of me because he'd done photography and then i this was back in the day when twitter you know twitter people you teen guys don't twitter used to be a thing and um i put a picture up of me with the lemon ice cream with hair and me like not even like diced or anything it's probably like 10 percent body fat mm -hmm. um with tanned uh, with baby oil with doing plenty of push-ups and everyone was like wow luke i want you so when people say like before and after pictures don't work they still work mm -hmm. do you know it works better a progress picture not calling it before and after because mm -hmm. you're using that terminology and telling a story so this is this was within a 10-week period luke trained three times a week he done this split blah 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 his macros went from this to that that's better than a before and after picture mm -hmm. um I had a load of people like, Luke, I want you to train me. And this is when I was lecturing full time. So I was doing 40 hours a week. And I was like, okay, I cannot physically train you in person because I just don't have the hours. Mm -hmm. uh, but I can train you online. Because there was a few little douchebags at the time doing um, online coaching, like saying it was personalized and it wasn't. And I just went onto Twitter because I was using that. Mm -hmm. I went onto my personal Facebook and she said, I'm looking for 10 people to do eight weeks body transformation for 100 quid and out of the 10 probably eight of them were school friends and i got really great results with them and then i had like at least eight pictures of before and afters of these body transformations and then i used them and then i got more people and then more people so i think when you're looking at how the hell am i going to get the first clients just because you have the internet and i can target people in America, who are Conor McGregor fans, who live in New York City within a certain mile radius, who earn over X amount of money, just because I can target them, it doesn't mean I, I should, because it takes time to build this value. Like, yeah. how many times, think about it, how many times have you gone onto Facebook and you've seen an ad of these body transformation specialists? I see these marketing gurus now um, who don't have a business. I'm thinking, if you're really good at marketing, why the hell you not got a business that you market that makes money rather than trying to consult for other people? that to to do their marketing um so first and foremost go with people you know 
because that barrier to entry there you already so if we look at like brand awareness know like and trust and stuff like that people already know you because they were your school friends yeah. they hopefully like you a little bit they know that you're you're not a dickhead on facebook um they're the people which you'll be able to get to sign up initially so think about friends maybe not family members um or distance family members and then look at um people people you know or ex-clients if you if they have gone away if you are getting into offline uh if you are getting into online through offline pt because they you've already built that rapport you know they invested in their 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 training their nutrition and stuff like that Um, but then guess what you're just gonna have to be patient Mm -hmm. you're just gonna have to be very specific if you can take away one thing from this podcast or radio or episode or whatever you can call it is when it comes to online personal training Guess what? The internet is social media. The social social media is the internet now. Like, mm. it just is. So you need to look at your strengths. Like, if you talk like this, then you can't really. Do you know what I mean? Then don't yeah. go and start a podcast or don't go and start a vlog. Um, yeah, focus on what you're good at. The best avatar for most of these guys just basically trying to appeal to people like you three years yeah. ago or two years ago. Because guess what? You understand that. Like, if I try to target females online, I'm like, well, I have a D and now I have a V. And um, I don't know about menopause or whatever it is. So, if you're really looking to try and target someone, target you a few years ago before you got educated, before you started listening to AJ's podcast. Focus on that. But then you just have to only, and I mean only, post content that AJ would like. Like, I don't want to post content. If I post on Facebook and it appeals to you one day and then the next day I'm talking about menopause, you'll be like, there's just a disconnect. There needs to be something in sync. You need to basically, when you start online coaching, your whole competition is the world. But then when you get real specific, that narrows it down. So we're talking billions of people. Mm -hmm. Let's say millions of coaches. Um, And then you're going, right, no, I'm just a team muscle guy. How many other people were there like that? I can't think of many mm. who actually had team in their title. So when it comes to someone following you, they're going to connect with you, AJ, more than they're going to connect to me. I'm 30, you're 20, mm. yeah? You, you just come out of your teens, but you can understand that. You um, get social media. You're a different person to me. We have different life experiences. We have different likes and things like that. So someone who is you say an 18 year old is going to connect with you more yeah. than me as a 30 year old however a 30 year old dad who's going to connect with me more because you're only 20 and you don't have a child that you're aware of mm. yeah Do you know what I mean I, so when it comes to that you just need to be patient and just mark it like a magnet sorry for cutting you off mark it like right. a magnet Appear, attract those that you want and repel those that you don't like Absolutely. you can do this when you, your target audience is the world, but if you try to do this, and it's like a little town in South Wales with a population of four hundred people, and only and they're like the average age is fifty, mm-hmm. and you're trying to be that team muscle guy, it's not gonna work. So there's a, there's a thing like fire. It's like find your avatar, find your niche, or maybe just be your proxy self and let your niche find who the hell you are. Like you will, if you are yourself and you're consistent with that, then the people which enjoy that will start following you on Facebook or on Instagram, on the Snap. And then after two months or three months, and we did, we actually done some research on this with the Shredded by Science Academy. And I thought, right, on average, it's like a thousand pounds to sign up for the academy, whether it's monthly or paying for. And I thought, right. Well, we've SBS Shredded by Science has only been around for years. I'm thinking, and we we changed avatars as well, which we can maybe touch base on later. But okay. we, I thought, right, for a thousand pound a month, a thousand pound in total, say over a year, that's quite a big investment. They probably need to follow us for like a year to two years before they make that transition, as in a fan to an actual member or a client. Sure. When we looked at it, of those which signed up this intake, where we've got like 113. Um, like 45% of them had been following Shredded by Science for less than six months. So I'm like, damn. Interesting. That, that's, so if I hypothesize that, 
I would have uh, predicted that they need to follow us at least 12 months before they actually jump in and make that commitment. So I think it's based on the frequency and the value and the consistency and being in sync. So if you're vlogging, say, for every single day, yeah. you've got seven pieces of content just on video format, just on YouTube, say, mm-hmm. to actually make an impact. Where if you only do it once a week, that's all right. It's going to take you seven weeks to turn out the same amount of content. Yeah. So it's looking at the platform, marrying your strengths to the platform, and then going all in on them and making sure you're just everywhere, like mm. absolutely everywhere. And I wouldn't even focus on like Facebook ads and stuff like that because you probably don't even know how to do them. And, and you you and you think, and what I say as well, focus on the content and providing value to a specific person. So every time I post something, I'm thinking. Does AJ like that? AJ's a person trainer. He's my target audience. Would mm-hmm. AJ find value in that? If no, then there's not. Then it's not great content. Do you know what I mean? Co- content has to. It's all about relevancy. Mm. Now, if I put out great content for personal trainers every single day, whether it's on Snapchat, which we do, on Instagram, on YouTube, not on a daily basis, on Facebook on a daily basis. Yeah. We're we're we're. I mean, I've run some stats in like three months and. Uh, period from the academy launch i mean i could i could try and find them somewhere but like the amount of reach like we reached over like two hundred thousand people wow. and had x amount of engagements in just a three-month period mm-hmm. so it's looking at how you can pr- consistently provide value on multiple different platforms but the platforms that your avatar are in so you know where, where are you on then aj where do you focus more of your social media content on that's a good question. I'd say, and I was going to sort of talk about this as well. I'd say definitely recently it's gone more towards Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat, and just those three. Because in the past, what I try and do is I try to be on YouTube. I try to do, uh, so I, you know, I try to set up a Twitter and all of this jazz, but I, I never got the same the same sort of response as I should um, on those platforms like YouTube just it just never seemed to grow whereas I'd look, I'd look at other people that were not getting any growth on Facebook like they'd put up a really long informative post they get one like you know no comments no engagement no nothing but they put up a YouTube video ton of comments ton of views because they're very good on YouTube mm-hmm. um, so I'd say I resonate massively with you on the consistency front because I'm like into a routine with I know when I'm going to post on Instagram like I know that before I do anything in the morning I'm probably going to post on Instagram and I'm probably Mm -hmm. going to try and give some value so I knew before I got on this podcast post on Instagram and give a little bit of value and then my Facebook I'd always schedule something 6 p.m. every single day like I don't think there's a day that I've missed that in Mm -hmm. a long time Um, and the same with Snapchat as well there's I think Snapchat is probably one of the ones that I've sometimes full fell back on purely because I've struggled with the whole how do I grow this type thing and I know because it's hard to get organic followers on it really like you have to yeah. you have to have a Facebook or an Instagram or YouTube or another platform where they can find you by people sharing content or by typing stuff in or uh, keywords like YouTube but that's the thing when it comes to Snapchat you need to have a good following on a on another platform to then get those people onto your Snapchat so you might say YouTube and you might do two videos a week um, one on training, one on nutrition, or whatever it is, or it might be free or daily or whatever it is. Let's say it's just let's let's not go with daily. But then what you can do is use Snapchat as a depth building, as in you already follow me on Facebook or YouTube. You you see like two videos a week, but if you follow me on Snapchat, you're going to see me every single day. You're going to see me. You're going to know exactly what I'm going to upload on YouTube because I'm going to tell you about that. I'm going to Snapchat me right now, just saying I'm pod. I'll just like uh, just a quick snap. I've already done this on Snap. AJ's there. Look yeah. and just bang. I've got that there. So it's looking it's looking at the platforms and respecting the platforms. One thing as well, like let's try and give as many nuggets as we go. I ain't saying knowledge bombs because cops say that. <laughs> Boom. And then they do that at the end. Yeah, Christ. Look out. I can't remember what I was going to poxy say now because I've got onto Cox and knowledge bombs. Um, but look at. Yeah, it's, it's there somewhere. But <laughs> if it's looking looking at documenting your life, like you might not be able to afford a cameraman following you around all day, but anyone can just get Snapchat and anyone can just record what they're doing. And that's mm. providing depth with their actual followers. You, so you, you're not going to get new people following you on Snapchat. 
Like they would have found you on YouTube or found you on Facebook and then they would have gone, oh, this person's on Snapchat. Do you yeah. know what I mean? But what you're doing is you're servicing the 200 to 300 people, maybe more, maybe less, and giving them a behind the scenes look because people are nosy. Like yeah. the big brother, like people would watch other people sleep. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? You might not find it interesting, but other people do. So it's having that, it's having that balance of like my Instagram filtered everything I want you to see, that snapshot. And then Snapchat is like just the behind the scenes or Instagram stories is the behind the scenes of stuff now. Yeah. And it's having, it. having, having that balance of both creating content and documenting. So create, creating could be your, your nice camera, your very well edited video. Mm. And then that, that has more thought. Like when I do YouTube videos now, I storyboard the hell out of stuff. I, I have a, this thing here. So but I know, and I didn't used to do this. But you'll see. Is this going out via video, yeah? Or not? Yeah, 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 video. So I've got that there. So I, I frame stuff and I say, right, these are the topics and this is what I'm going to – this one's about publish. This was um, for SPS Elite, publishing your, like your blog, like creating blogs and going through the process. Yeah, yeah. So that is me creating content. That is me spending an extra three, four, five hours per week creating it, knowing exactly where I want it to look at nice and edited music every, everything fine that's just what i want everyone to see but when you've got instagram stories or when you've got snapchat i'm showing you the behind the scenes i'm showing you me in the, in plowway calf down the road me drawing that so people know that it's coming so it's having both creation of content and documenting that creation that you put out and this i would probably arguably say it's the documentation of the behind the scenes stuff which builds relationships more than just yeah. that one or two videos on YouTube per week. Yeah, absolutely. And I think something <clears throat> as well for me is something that annoys me and something like when, when people say sort of, you know, you know how, how do you go your Snapchat or how do you go your Instagram or how do you get people to come through to uh, inquire about personal training through Instagram and Snapchat because... I'm quite open that I do get quite a lot of people through Snapchat and through Instagram inquiring. Um, and quite a lot of the time, like the people that are struggling with the growth of that is like half the time they're not being themselves on the platform. So like they'll they'll be, the, and like you said, the whole highlight reel on Instagram, that's kind of different. But when you're not, like people know you as a person on YouTube or something and then you're completely different on Snapchat and your tone of voice is completely different on Facebook. Like it's never the same. So I think, consistent if you'd agree i think consistency across all the platforms is probably something that in terms of your just your generic personality you should, it's not difficult to walk and talk when you're being yeah. yourself like you're the same when you listen to you on a podcast you're the same on snapchat like yeah it, it's because no it's difference. it's that consistency not only in consistently posting at 6 p.m on facebook every single day it's yeah. the consistency with your brand message like everyone is a brand like you aj morris is a brand mm -hmm. yeah every you're just a personal brand and then you may work for a company or or you may have do you know what i mean where you there's a bigger brand to that but yeah. everyone is them everyone is like me and you we've met up a few times and stuff like that if you, mm -hmm. i was one way a particular time if i was dressed in like the 99s and talking like this and then next minute i'm in the park and i'm swearing there's a disconnect you're, mm. you you don't you don't know who the real me is or i don't know who the real aj is so how can you sign up with someone if you don't trust someone yeah and they're like well, hang on a minute this person totally and we see it all the time on facebook like especially in our little evidence-based science bubble where people are like oh this person's a troll or this person's oh this person's a, a dickhead on facebook but in person they're really nice i'm like i don't care if there's <laughs> if they're if they're if there's a massive difference then they're just a dickhead in general and it's like yeah. i don't care whether they're a nice person when you get to know them it's like yeah. just be yourself and if you and the thing is you can you can um guess what you can be yourself 100 percent of the time and if people don't like aj or if people don't like me then i don't want their money anyway no why would i want their money no. i'll be like if you don't like it because i dropped a couple of swear words on the podcast or i made some jokes and you didn't find them funny it's like i would rather you not even listen to me ever again or even know of me ever again like i want you i want me to be dead to you mm -hmm. because i don't want to even have a, a, a connection whatsoever with that type of person so 
definitely right what you said like it has to be consistency with the value consistency with the tone the message and consistency across platforms but then still res- respecting platforms this is one thing which i did forget don't link up your twitter your facebook and instagram so when you post on twi- on facebook it automatically goes onto twitter or when you post on instagram it automatically goes onto facebook because even though most people we know pretty much everyone's on facebook there might be some people which aren't on Facebook or there might be people on Facebook which are not on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And each platform has different quirks and things to it. Like on Facebook, you could upload however long video you want to do. With Instagram, it gives you a minute at the moment. Beforehand, it gave you less. Twitter now gives you like I don't, two, two, 240 seconds, maybe less, maybe more. I don't go on it as much. Okay. But it's looking at the platforms, looking at the type of people on them platforms and respecting those platforms for like an Instagram is a creative. So rather than you just putting up a gen, like just one simple thing, Facebook 1200 by 628, do an image for that, yeah? Then go to Instagram, do an image 1080 by 1080. Spend three more minutes, but make it specific to the platform. Mm-hmm. By making it 10 by 8, 1080 by 1080, rather than using the same one for Facebook onto Instagram, your image ain't going to be that big. Your image is going to be that big and it's going to be square. And people, you might, you might just get someone to stop scrolling their phone because it is a bigger size. Yeah, Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So spend a little bit more time and respect the platforms. Like you can put some longer form stuff on Instagram, but there is a limit. Yeah, so yeah, if yeah. I put a thing on Facebook and it's like 700 words, I'm not saying that that's the pe- best words or whatever, but then you go to Instagram, you can't do that on Instagram. You need to have it, you need to Instagram it up a little bit or Facebook yeah. it up a little bit or Insta story. So I do stuff now where we actually create content on Instagram at Shred by Sites, just putting that in there if you're a personal trainer if you're not a personal trainer please don't follow us um on insta stories it's uh 1080 via 1080 1920 okay. so normally like hd's 1920 by 1080 if you yeah. flip it around a bit so if i'm doing videos now i'm thinking what well, can i actually get that into 1080 by 1920 or images so that when we upload into instagram stories <laughs> it's actually cre- uh, native content created just for instagram stories or it's just for Instagram, or it's just for Facebook. So don't just link up all your social media accounts and post it, and then you end up looking on someone's Facebook profile, and there's like 30 hashtags. It's like no one uses hashtags yeah, on yeah, Facebook. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like it just looks lazy. It looks like you've not really bothered, and you're just trying to, like, it just doesn't work. Like spend a little bit more time focused on that. Another thing about the online coaching thing, I would pick someone now, nah, as an online business, I would rather pick, I would go by, like back in the day it used to be CVs. If someone wanted to work for Shredded by Science, and you can't by the way, because we ain't taking on coaches, unless you're an educator, then, then, get, at, then get at me. Um, I The CV of 2017, because we're there now, I look at your social media. So if AJ applied to work for Shredded by Science, not that he is, but it would be sensible. You know, no one. You can't. <laughs> not even AJ can. I, do you know what I'd do? I'd go and look at his social media. I'd be like, okay, he gets it because I'm an online business. And guess what? We're media companies. If we look around this office now, I've got one camera, I've got two cameras, I've got tripods, I've got these cameras. Do you know what I mean? I've got, I just bought a, a horrible gaming laptop, which is hideous looking for live streaming. We are yes. a media company. We are literally, I pay thousand pound a month to have a white walls in like a little office so we can just record content so we can just create 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 we're a media company so i would hire a trainer now my criteria would be like do they get it are they a personality are they scared on being on camera or are they a really good writer if they're not a good writer are they good on being on camera do they get instagram do they get social media and then do they have a brain or do they have a desire to learn? Because I can teach that. I've got people. I've got Eric Helms, Mike Zudos, Alan Aragon. I've got plenty of friends who have got plenty more smarts than what I have when it comes to training nutrition. But you can't really teach personality. You can improve it a little bit. But you just either got it or you ain't. So it's looking, being very self-aware and being like, I'm the guy who loves being on camera. Like I used to, I didn't hate the camera, but Snapchat, my confidence through the roof now. I'm like, if I see a camera, I'm not like, do you know, like some people, are like oh, I don't want to see it. I'm just like, yeah, hello, <laughs> camera, like my webcam's on. That's I'm like, we doing this. Um, <laughs> but it, do you know what I mean? I'd rather pick someone who gets something like that, who's not a complete like, uh, yeah. but 
have a desire to learn because I can I've got all the resources in the world to improve their training and nutrition but if the, if if they're just not that way inclined if they just don't get it via social media or they feel they don't have a skill in regard to providing content whether it's written form audio form or video form then I wouldn't get them so I, I think definitely those which are looking to get into online coaching and not go down the offline PT route, which you don't have to do. You don't have to do anything. I like doing, I actually like doing the opposite of what everyone else is, like all the other academies out there. They're not using Snapchat. I'm using Snapchat. Do you know what I mean? I'm looking at getting the young 18, 19 year olds, and I, but I'm, I'm waiting that long game. I'm not look. I don't, you might not have the money now to spend a thousand pounds on the academy, but I don't care. And I think you just got to give, 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 but not expect to receive. So don't, most people in the industry are just like, I'm going to do an Instagram post and it's me with my abs, which gets attention. But I use a, let, let's, let's bring it back to sex and stuff like that. Let's, let's look at, because, I, but the way I'm talking now on your podcast is specific to a younger audience. Yeah, if I'm on another yeah. podcast and their target audience and their listeners are older, I probably wouldn't be giving these examples. No. But let's look at um, the analogy of, um, getting like most instagram posts now is like they grab attention as in you've got abs now i'm not saying don't have abs because if you're into fitness but how many people do we know aj who are just literally a pair of abs and they have nothing to do with training and they all they sell their 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 whole business model is predicated on them being in shape but guess what there's a thing called aging and aj ain't going to be 20 for the rest of his life when he's 30 he still might be in shape, but there's going to be a lot. There's going to be newer 20 year olds. There's 10 year olds now who are now going to be 20. Mm. And people are going to resonate with them. Like yeah. you get older and you're probably, your followers at the moment are a similar age. So they're going to get older as well. So yeah. the stuff you put out is going to, it's going to, it's going to tweak and it's going to change and stuff like that. But if your whole business model is predicated on you having abs, it's not a business model. Mm. You're just basically just grabbing attention. It's like going to a club. And you see this girl at the bar, and she is a 10 out of a 10. There's no question. There's no man in that room which is going to say otherwise. She is a 10 out of a 10. But the music's pumping, yeah? Like, like You can't have a conversation with this 10 out of 10. But she gives you the eye for whatever reason. She, she might be partially sighted. We don't know that at the time. You get you get a number, or you get a Snapchat. You snap, you snap her code, yeah? Let's, get it, let's keep it. You, I've, just, yeah. I've just snapped your code. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's another fit. Snap gash is the new thing comes in. Uh, and then all of a sudden, yeah, so you, you, you start snapping. You, you're following on Snapchat. You're building some sort of relationship. Rapport. Yeah, rapport. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're caught in. That's not, like when my granddad first said, oh, you caught in this one. I'm like, what the hell was that? I ain't taking this to court. I'm like, oh, that you mean seeing someone. Mm-hmm. So you young guys who like, what the hell does he mean caught in? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just basically your... your going steady or you're seeing someone um and then you go out on a date with her yeah she's still a 10 out of 10 she looks Mm. stunning you sit down you're having a meal she's the dumbest thing you've ever come across there's nothing she's just literally a pretty face and a nice body or it could be him because it's the other way around even though i know even though most of your listeners are probably male so we'll keep it that now she might be a 10 out of 10 but you're like she is the most boringest but the most boring person I've ever come across, <laughs> she thinks Brazil is in Russia. Do you know what I mean? Like, there is nothing to her. The only thing I could possibly do, because she's a 10 out of 10, is take her back to my bedroom. There's no way I'm marrying her. Okay. And that's the same with, like, these Insta-famous coaches. Yeah. As in, they may just be a physique. And, like, there, we know plenty of people which have used stupid tactics to get shredded. Like, only eat clean, bro. And yeah, like sugar's like worse than heroin and stuff like that. Um, but they still get in shape and they still attract those type of people. Uh-huh. Um, but there's no substance to them. So once their abs are gone, once they've aged, they don't have a business anymore. There's new AJ Morris's on 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 the horizon. You're 30 and now they're 20. Mm-hmm. So you need to provide substance. So you could have all the social media in the world. But if you ain't actually good at what you do, like you said before, but they, they don't get results with clients, like whether it's offline or online, yeah. it's like you need to make sure, it's like a double-edged sword. If you just focus on being really good at marketing and you do this Facebook Ninja hat course and then this Instagram one and then this one, 
you're just basically getting eyes onto you. Yep. People only buy shit once. They sign up for your coaching, they go, fuck it now. Like, he looks good, but he's, he's coaching experience to service is terrible. They're not gonna come back. And the great thing about social media is, it gives you a microphone. Mm-hmm. Like, we can compete with the big companies now. Anyone, we're gonna start the fitness hour, like a live stream show, and we're gonna have guests in and guests via Skype. It gives you so many possibilities. Like, you don't need to be like having a, a shed load of money. You can just, you've got a smartphone, you could just video on this, and you could build a following. But then there needs to be substance. There needs to be backing that up with the actual knowledge. So you need to make sure you learn your craft, you you continue to learn, but you apply it at the same time. And you need to make sure you get results and people happy with your service. Because just having apps, and the good thing about social media is if you do fuck people over, everyone knows because they'll be like calling you out. This nutrition guy has, has taken my money and not provided a service. That's on Twitter. That's on Facebook. So it, it swings about roundabouts. It gives you a platform to succeed, but it also gives you this platform to be cut down one moment, just like that. Done. So it's done, done and dusted. Yeah, yeah. I I think that that's something that more people should think about. That last comment in terms of making sure that that they start off in the in the right place because or they don't it's especially they don't rush into it because people will make mistakes and i'm sure that there's you know i'll be honest there's 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 plenty of mistakes that i've made in coaching but not big enough to 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 do that and to to really give me a lot to deal with but a lot of people i've seen is like they'll get into it <clears throat> they'll get into it in a rushed way they'll do things incorrectly for a long time and then that's it or mm-hmm. they get put off the industry for